Hello, welcome to another video on an introduction to algebra. And in this video, I'm just going to introduce you to some of the language that we use in algebra, and in particular, the words terms and expressions. Now, I'm going to continue my theme from the last video of going to the supermarket. So let's say we go to the supermarket and we buy three pears, two apples and five carrots, but we don't know the cost of each one. So because we don't know the cost, let's just use a letter to represent the cost. So if we're going to buy three pairs, I'm going to say three times the cost of a pair. And I'm going to use P for pair for obvious reasons. Now, don't get confused with three pence here. This is P for pairs. And then we're going to add on two apples. So I'm going to use A for apples. So two lots of apples. And finally, we're going to add on five carrots. So five lots of carrots, five C. So as you can see, it's just a shorter way of writing this statement here. Now, what I've written out, this is called an expression. Now, I'm going to write down the formal definition of an expression in maths, but I'll go through it with you. So an expression is a group of numbers, symbols and operators, such as multiplication, division, addition and subtraction, that show the value of something. So here we've got a group of numbers, symbols and operators and they all, they're all grouped together and they represent the value of something. So when we add all these three things together, we get some value. And in this case, we're gonna get the cost of all three items. So this whole thing is called an expression, but what do we call each part of our expression? Notice there are three items that I've included in my expression, and each of these three items is called a term. And the thing that a lot of people forget is that a term always includes the sign in front of it. So this term here is plus 5c. That would be one term of our expression. Another term of our expression would be plus 2a, or the two apples, the plus two apples. And then the final part of our expression will be the 3p. Now that does say plus 3p in front, but we don't see it because we just don't write it down we just imply that that is plus 3p. So in this expression, we've got three terms. So a term is a single number or variable, or numbers and variables multiplied together, so what we've got here, and they're always separated by plus or minus signs. Now there is one other word that I haven't discussed yet, and that is coefficient. So let me just write that down. Now it sounds quite fancy, but it's actually really simple. The word coefficient just means the number attached to the letter or the variable. So in this case, the number attached to the letter C is five. So this is our coefficient. So you could think of it as how many of that something have you got? So how many carrots have we got? We've got five carrots. So five is our coefficient. In this case, our coefficient on this term is two. We're saying that we've got two apples. And the coefficient on this term is three. Now let's just say that along with these three items, I wanted to buy a football. So how would I write that? Well, I could write plus one F. So I'm adding on another football. So if I were to add this onto the end here, I'd write plus one F because we, we, we just want to buy one football. However, in maths, we generally, if we're only buying one of something, we don't write the one in front of our term. Or in front of our variable so we would just write plus f okay so if i were to say what is the coefficient on this f term a lot of people would say zero because there's no number here but in fact there is an invisible number here and that is one we just don't write it so whenever we've got a letter on its own or a variable on its own the coefficient is always one now this was quite a short video, but hopefully it helped you understand some of the language that we use in maths. And it's really important to understand the language um, for a couple of reasons. When a teacher's explaining a particular idea and they're using some of these words, it is really important to know what they're talking about. And also in exam questions, you might see some of these words crop up in exam questions. And if you don't know what they mean, it will be quite hard to actually answer the question. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.